As some of you know, the latest Samsung phones have this feature called Bixby Text Call. And it's pretty cool because it lets you answer any phone call with Bixby. Plus you can type out any responses to have Bixby say them out loud. Well, you can now do the same thing with any other Android by downloading VoIP. You just type out your responses and it reads it out loud as well. But it takes it a step further by also using AI to automatically handle the entire conversation for you if you don't want to type anything out. You just tell it what the reason for the call is before you hit send. Order me a large Big Mac combo with a french fries and a Sprite. And that the assistant will conversate for you. Hello, this is McDonald's. Will you be placing a carry-out order? Hello, I would like to order for pickup, please. My name is Facundo Holtzmeister, and I would like to order a large Big Mac combo with french fries and a Sprite. Even answering any other questions that the other person may have on the other end. Okay, would you like any ketchup or sauces on the side? No sauces are needed, thank you. Okay, and just to confirm your order, you have a Big Mac, a large fry, and a Sprite. That is correct. I have a large Big Mac combo with French fries and a Sprite. It's pretty mind-blowing. The only thing they need to work on is making the voices sound a bit more natural and less robotic. Other than that, it works really well. The battery saver on Android is not very customizable. I mean, there are some phones like Samsung that let you modify a few things, but it's still pretty limited. That's why I started using Saver Tuner, because it really lets me change up Android's built-in power saving mode. Before on my Pixel, it would only disable the always on display, limit the background activity, lower the refresh rate, and enable the dark mode. But now with Saver Tuner, I can also have it automatically disable the animations, enter deep sleep as soon as the screen is turned off, enable data saver, lower the brightness, and a lot more. Hell, I can even choose to leave certain things on, like the always on display or the light theme. And yes, you can enable these profiles with the same battery saver tile as before. All you need to do to get this to work is enable the ADB command. What also works pretty well is our new wallpapers and widgets that we just released. These will take anyone's home screen setup to the next level and make you look like a professional designer. We even made some for your desktop. So sign up on our Patreon to step up your customization game, especially since we release new walls and widgets every week. And by the way, if you download at least one app from this entire list, all I ask is if you can please drop a thumbs up. It really means a lot when you guys show your support for the channel and I really do appreciate it. Anyways, let's jump back into these seven apps and three games for this month's episode of the best Android apps for June, 2023. You know what really sucks on most Androids? The built-in screen recorder. They usually record at a low resolution and low bit rate, making the footage look choppy and bad. So I was kind of forced to find an alternative and I came across ScreenCam. This app lets me screen record at the highest resolution possible with a high bit rate and high frame rate for the smoothest recording possible. The best part is that it's even free and open source. But here's the catch. You won't be able to record the internal audio on some phones. Pretty annoying, but this isn't the app's fault. It's just Google's policy of not allowing certain apps to record at the system level. Other than that, screen cam works just fine. We all love a bright display and every year they keep making them brighter. The only annoyance is trying to use them at night while you're in bed, because sometimes even setting it to the lowest brightness may not cut it, especially if you're sleeping with someone else. So what I started using is screen dimmer. This app will simply make your phone even darker than the lowest brightness setting. And within the notifications, you can increase the dim even further. Just be careful not to do it too much because it's so powerful that you may end up not even being able to see anything. Moving on, Screen Protector doesn't allow any of your apps to see what you're doing on your phone because it basically blacks out any screenshots or screen recordings that are taken. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, if you have a malicious app with a screen capture module, it can just screen record and store any of the data that you're viewing. A pretty easy way to steal any of your valuable information like usernames, passwords, emails, etc. So to stop these apps, Screen Protector just blocks anything that gets captured. And when you actually want to capture the screen, you can just disable the protection within the notification shade. Pretty cool. Anytime there's a way to improve my workflow, I jump on the opportunity because I know that it's going to catapult my videos to new heights. And guess what? I've recently joined forces with Insta360 to improve my workflow and lifestyle with their new Insta360 Flow. 
It's an AI compact smartphone stabilizer and it's the best tool for easily improving the quality of any videos you take on your smartphone while you're out and about. Setting it up is also a piece of cake. You just put the clamp on the phone, magnetically snap it onto the gimbal, unfold the handle and voila, you're ready to start shooting. I took it to Google I.O. and every shot I recorded at the event looked stunning. Everything was perfectly stabilized. The Insta360 app, compatible with both iOS and Android, has useful features like AI tracking, which always keeps the subject in the frame and re-identifies them if they get blocked by something else. It's pretty awesome to see how well it follows the subject, no matter how fast they move. Definitely haven't seen any other competitor do this before. But my favorite thing about this smart gimbal is that I could extend the arm to turn it into a selfie stick, or even extend the handle's legs to turn it into a mini tripod. Pretty game changer when taking it to any trips or events you want to record. It's the perfect option for any content creators, travelers, families, or even casual athletes. So if you want to improve your videography skills or make your smartphone videos more memorable, check out Insta360 Flow through the top link in the description. Now I don't usually review widget apps anymore because a lot of them stop getting updated after a few months, except for the ones we make on our Patreon page. Those are still going. Recently though, I came across Weejeet. Uh, I don't know, I think that's how you say it. Um, it isn't your typical personalization app. This one lets you have dozens of Material U widgets that are extremely customizable. I mean, you can change the shapes, colors, size, etc. And it doesn't even require the KWGT app to work. They have music players, clocks, calendars, and device info widgets, which all get updated live on your home screen without any delay. And the best part is that it's free with no ads or in-app purchases. The only thing I wish it could do is let me change the touch action because whenever I tap them, they usually only open up in the app settings. Still, it's really well done. You know that built-in Android file manager? You know, the, the one that pops up whenever an app needs to access a file on your phone? Well, if you download material files, you can literally have that as a full-on file manager. Yep, that means you can modify any of your files, extract zips, rename things, move things around, and do any of the other basics. I especially love its design, because it's very modern, clutter-free, and straightforward. Plus, if you have root, you can even access the root storage section. The only thing I wish it had is an option to change the view from a list to a grid, but I still love using it, especially since it's completely free and open source. Switching over to the games, the famous World of Goo is now on Android and it's all thanks to Netflix. So you will need an active Netflix account to play this game. It's basically a puzzle game where the objective is to extend a structure made out of goo. You do this by grabbing the little balls of goo with eyes on them and then placing them on the outer edge to make them stick. All these little critters are freed once you reach the pipe on the other end. It's pretty fun because there are so many ways to build that bridge and still make it across. There isn't just one way of completing the level, so you can get creative. Just keep in mind that the biggest thing holding back your creation is the laws of physics. So, pretty fun game. Anti-Vine is another puzzle game that is very similar to Monument Valley. You get to play as a young boy, exploring various worlds, alongside a girl who lost her memories. You need to work together to pass through the various stages, and it's pretty mesmerizing how you can swipe to the left or right to change the perspective of the entire world. Plus, it makes some of the plants turn into bridges. The story is also really good, but it's honestly really sad. The music literally makes me want to tear up just listening to it. The graphics and controls are also well done. Not as amazing as Monument Valley, but still enjoyable. Plus, it's free to download and doesn't have any ads. Moving on to something that isn't a puzzle game, Super Cat Tails Paws is pretty fun. It has this Mario-like feel to it, so the gameplay isn't anything new. But I still find it enjoyable because reaching the end of each stage is pretty challenging and it doesn't make me want to put down the phone until I complete the stage. You get to play as a cat who's on a mission to protect its land, so you'll need to ram into enemies, jump across gaps, and collect as many coins as possible. Plus, I don't think you'll ever get bored with this game because there are so many worlds to play through. The only thing I don't like is that the controls are a bit difficult to get the hang of. I wish they would just provide an extra button that lets me do jumps instead of needing to tap the screen as fast as possible and only then the cat automatically can jump once I reach the edge of the platform. 
Still, it's a great time killer and completely free to download. Anyways, click this video right here to view the last month's episode of the best Android apps for May. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!